So in this video I want to cover modelling excitons in organic solar cells. Um, now, the way uh, charge gets generated in an organic solar cell is a photon firstly gets absorbed in the active layer, so, so this layer here, and um, it turns into an exciton, which is a bound electron hole pair. And this pair diffuses to an interface and the charge, the electron hole splits. And I'm not going to go into this in detail because there's lots of other places we can read about this. Now, the way you model this process usually in an organic solar cell is you have an optical model. So here's, here's the um, here's an optical model. So this is this is where the photons are absorbed to this position of the device as a wavelength. Um, and then you so you, you calculate using the transfer matrix method where where the charge gets absorbed. Um, and then you feed this into um, so your generation rate, so effectively this generation rate, you feed that into an exciton solver that allows the excitons to diffuse within the device and you have some rate equations that then allow them to relax and then you have electron and hole ch uh, charges generated for your electric model. So, we got, so we're effectively going to talk about in this video the stage between optical generation and the generation of free electrons and holes in your, in your device model. Um, now I've written a bit about this on in the manual, um, so the chapter is called Modeling Excitons, um, Geminate Recombination for Organics Only. It might not be chapter 7 by the time you download the, the manual, but it'll be called something like that. Um, <clears throat> and I've, I've written a paragraph here on why you shouldn't be doing modeling excitons in organic solar cells. Um, it might seem like a very good idea, but the difficulty is that to accurately model excitons, you need to know lots of things. Um, so here's the rate equation, like the diffusion length, like um, disassociation probability, and things like that, that very often you don't have access to. Um, so often it's actually better off um, just to assume a photon efficiency, as I talk about here, and say, oh, well, you know, on average, each, each um, absorbed photon generates, say, 0.7 um, um, electrons and holes. Um, rather than trying to model the detailed physics, because you probably don't have the numbers. But um, sometimes you do have the numbers um, to uh, fill this equation, so I'm going to talk about that now. So this example that we're looking at here comes from the new simulation window, and um, it is Exton device, so it's this one here. Um, so if we just uh, run the simulation, um, what we get is we click on the output, uh, we get a standard current voltage curve, um, just as you would expect. Um, and I think this is some modern polymer we're doing this with. So, oops, this is some modern polymer we're doing this with. Um, what are we doing it with? We're doing it with PM6Y6, so it's a relatively efficient material. Now, um, if you look at the electrical um, parameters for this device, so here, here we are. Um, I've turned off trap states in this just, just to make the simulation simple, but if you're doing this for real, you probably want to turn these back on. Um, and in down here in the bottom of this window, by clicking this exton button, um, uh, you've got things like the scattering length, the lifetime, um, the KPL, KFRET, K alpha, and K dis, which are all these parameters that you need to feed into this exton uh, effectively diffusion dissociation equation. And as I said, this sits between the optical model and electrical model. So the generate so the sort of relaxation of this goes into the generation of charge in the electrical model. Um, so you know you can play with the the, the lifetime, the fusion length, things like that of, of this equation uh, by adjusting these parameters. So when you run the simulation as we just did a second ago, um, you'll get out this directory called exciton output. And if we look into this, we see these files. And let's look at the ones that are the most interesting. Well um, Let's look at the simple ones firstly. So let's look at the diffusion length. Now this is constant across the device. So let's just look at that diffusion length. Where is it? There's diffusion length. You see it's constant across the device. So that was just the um, L squared divided by tau. So let's look at the, um, the generation of excitons uh, going into this equation. So maybe I'll put, how can I minimize this? Put that like that. Here, put that on top. Yeah, so let's look at the um, put that down there. There we go. Let's um, look at the this this optical generation of excitons. So there's G of n. There we go. So that's effectively the mode profile of the excitons being generated, and um, the actual excitons within the device. So X can we look at X, and that's what the exciton density is within the device. 
and then let's look at how the x on decay into the electrical model. So that's the charge generation, that's the G of N, and we can see that's that's decay into electrical model. Um, so just put that there and put that there. And you can see that the um, move that there. You can see that um, in this example um, we've got a generation of excitons 1.75 to 28 but the actual generation of charge is 1.2 to the 28 so we've got some loss there um, you know you can also see this distribution a bit more spread out and a bit more relaxed just because of the, the exciton diffusion we can make that um, even more extreme uh, by changing the parameters so we can um, let's uh, so how, how, do we, how do we increase the l so let's increase diffusion length where's diffusion length uh, scattering length let's increase this by order of magnitude and rerun this and let's look at the uh so that's the optical generation that's the excitons being generated and this is the decay into the optical model and uh, put that and what you can see is by, in by increasing that diffusion length, we'd be able to sort of spread out this distribution, sort of take these humps off of it. So you can play all sorts of games with that. Um, and uh, that's really it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. That was a quick intro into exton modeling. There'll, there'll be more, I'll fill in these sections of the manual in a bit. Um, so there'll be a bit more detail um, and this video effectively turned into words down there in a few days. So thank you very much for um, watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.